All right, welcome everyone to another video. In this video, we'll be painting the Skaven Warlord from the Island of Blood starter set. I've had this model lying around for a little while, and I thought it would be a good idea to put a put together a little video of me painting it. So I hope you enjoy. So to start off, I used an airbrush and base coated the entire model using Vallejo Model Air Black. The reason I painted this model black is uh, I want a, a little darker tone to it and I'm also going to be using a lot of metallic paints on it and uh, generally I, I believe uh, metallics is, is best applied over a dark or black base coat. I usually like to start by painting the skin. In this case I'm, uh, I'm going to base coat the skin with an equal mixture of Vallejo pale flesh and Vallejo dwarf skin. At this point, the paint is diluted with about 30% water. It took two layers of my original base coat to cover the model skin. The tail I realized wasn't looking too good with just a plain skin color so I went back and mixed in a little bit of squid pink in my original base color mixture and just gave it a, a coat of that. The entire skin area of the model was washed heavily with ogren flesh. Uh, I did this two times letting the wash dry completely between the steps of course. to give them more sickly and albino looking appearance. For the first highlight I went back with my original base color which was uh, equal measures uh, pale flesh and uh, dwarf skin and just went over any detail I thought would look interesting um, anything that would catch the the light such as the uh, the snout and the eyebrows and the top of the ears and fingers and uh, etc tail was highlighted with the same base color I used for the skin and just added a little bit of squid pink to the mixture. The cloth or robe of the model was base coated using uh, Citadel's foundation paint Mech Right Red. I didn't thin the mixture too much, uh, around 10 to 20 percent water, just because uh, the foundation paint has a tendency of drying very level and not leaving not leaving any brush strokes even though you put it on quite thick which helps to cover the model more quickly
The armor and some of the details on the weapon was base coated using Vallejo Brassy Brass. I mixed in about 10 to 20% water. And of course this is applied as many layers as needed to get a uniform color. I believe it took two coats of my particular mixture to get a uniform uh, base color. The entire brass area is given a heavy wash of Devlin mud, trying to focus the, the wash and the recesses and on the details but also making sure uh, all, all the areas get covered uh, heavily with it with it the, this has an effect of uh, dulling down the the shininess of the metal color and also making it look uh, more worn and dirty which is an effect uh, I'm going for here I did this in two layers. Once the first coat of uh, wash was dry, I applied another one, equally heavy. Next, all the metal parts was base coated using Gun, which is a Vallejo model air color. And the reason I use the model air color range is because it contains a much finer pigment, which makes the end result not look uh, as glittery or flaky. Instead, you have a more shiny, shiny look to it, more um, more realistic metal look, I believe. You could use your standard metallics to this. Uh, but it's just my preference. Uh, this will require three or four coats. As you can see here, it's, it's quite a thin color. But I believe the end result is worth it, making a, a better overall effect. Next up, the brazier on top of the banner is coated using Vallejo model color Panzer series Luftwaffe Camo Green. The paint is diluted with about 30% water. And as you can see I've also base coated the, the Skaven, uh, Skaven symbol in the banner. Using Brassy Brass, the same color I used to base coat the, the armor. This will also be giving a, a wash of Devlin mud off camera. All of the wooden areas on the model is base coated using charred brown. Again the paint is thinned out with about 30, 20 to 30 percent water. I apply two coats of this color to get a uniform uh, base coat. All the leather parts on the model is base coated with Beastie Brown and Leather Brown mixed 50-50, 20% water.
What little fur the model has showing is base coated using Beast to Brown. The paint is not diluted too much since the area I need to reach is quite fiddly. Uh, I could have done this beforehand and um, used a thinner paint, but at this point I'm using a straight out of the bottle to improve the, the control of the paint so it doesn't go everywhere when I try to apply it. parchment hanging from the banner as well as the skull is base coated using bone white or bleach bone. I've done a one coat off camera and this is the second one. I've diluted this paint with about 30% water or, or maybe close to 40. The bleach bone has a tendency at least for me to um, to dry very quickly and leave uh, leave marks and brush strokes so I need to dilute it quite quite heavily to get a, um, a nice smooth smooth base coat. This will require four coats to cover completely. A heavy wash of Devla mud is applied to the metal areas, the, the weapons and the uh, chainmail, as well as the fur and leather parts of the model. Griffin sepia wash thinned down with 40% water is used on the parchment hanging from the banner. I prefer using uh, Griffin sepia to, to Devlin mud, although I will be putting a cover or a coat of Devlin mud over this very thinly. Uh, I prefer base coating with um, Griffin sepia. It just gives a more, um, I, I believe, it gives a more parchment looking look, if you will. And yes, a coat of Devil Mod here is applied. 50 or close to 60% thin at this point. I just want to uh, deepen up the details a little bit because it's getting a little bit darker. To highlight the fur, I used Beastie Brown. I didn't thin this uh, at all or very, very sparingly, just so I could better control where the paint goes. It's very easy to make a, a mistake having a, a too diluted paint at this point and having it all just flow out over the details. So that's why I used um, a little thicker paint here. And also Beast of Brown was used to highlight the, the wooden areas. This particular model has sculpted in uh, details on the wood, uh, sort of the grain, and I just uh, highlighted the, uh, the top of it with Beast of Brown. As you may have noticed, I have thinned the paint a little bit more and I'm also using a smaller brush uh, to do this kind of close-up detailing. The leather is highlighted with its base coat of 50-50 mix leather brown and beastie brown. I'm using about 40% water to the mixture and it took about or it took two coats to cover.
While painting the pouch, I'm trying to leave the washed base coat showing in the, some of the, of the recesses and the deeper areas. Now starting on the cloth, I begin by shading, mixing a, uh, a Devla Mud and Vallejo uh, Red Shade wash, equal, uh, an equal mixture 50-50, and I'm just aiming to put it in the recesses of the, of the cloth to uh, create more, more shades. I applied this in two, two layers, letting uh, the wash dry completely between each step, of course. Then I uh, began highlighting by mixing in um, Macride Red with Cater Red Base. It's a P3 color, Formula P3. Uh, mainly because it's the only red color I have at the moment. So uh, I used that, a 50-50 mix. And um, this is a ve very diluted paint, uh, close to 40% dilution. and. Um, I'm just aiming the, the, the paint at the top, top of the details. Uh, I did this in two coats and always uh, leaving the deeper uh, shadows untouched. The final highlight of the cloth was made by mixing in more Kator Red Base to my ori original color. Uh, I ended up with about 20% Macrite Red at this point. And this was applied uh, within the previous highlight. And of course staying away from the, the shadows. Also this was done in two layers. For the fire on top of the banner, Luftwaffe Camo Green and Scorpion Green was mixed 50-50 to begin the first highlight. And I've thinned this with about 40% uh, water. I'm not being too careful at this stage, I mainly want to cover about 80-90% to of the area. Later highlights I will be uh, covering a smaller and smaller area. I mix in a little bit more Scorpio Green for the next highlight, so the ratio is about one part Luftwaffe and two parts Scorpio Green. I tried to cover about 70% of the area this time around. And I am focusing my highlights on the top of the flame to make it look as a... Uh, a to make a more gradual paint transition from darker to lighter so I, I apply my highlights much more heavily on the top um, working down. More Scorpio Green is added and the mixture is now about one part Luftwaffe Camo to three parts Scorpio Green. This highlight is applied in even in an even smaller area, maybe around 50% of the area. 
same principle I'm focusing a lot of highlights on the top of the of the flame at this point I'm using pure scorpy green and I'm basically doing just small dots uh, strategically placed where I think it would look good uh, edges and uh, hot spots if you will the final highlight is a mixture of scorpio green and dead white which is just a pure white color um, this is the extreme highlight and I'm just doing very very subtle um, dots this will uh, give it a more glowy, um, glowy, magical feel. You could go even as high as uh, just pure white, but I thought it looked good after this, so I, I held it there. I will be adding some rust effects to the weapons. I'm using Vallejo Dark Rust and I'm gonna apply it with a sponge that I got from some packing materials uh, set set behind some miniatures. I, I take my tweezers and um, dip it in the uh, dark rust. I wipe almost all the paint off on the, on the piece of paper before applying it to the area. And this way you have more control of where the paint goes rather than putting it all on in one big blob. It's easy to overdo this, so uh, take your time and do it in multiple coats. Next I apply Vallejo Light Rust, using the same principle with the sponge, wiping it off before applying it on the model. The light rust uh, will act almost as a highlight to the dark rust and I'm applying it very sparingly, focusing around the edges and um, maybe some on the, on the body of the blade, but mainly around the edges. edges. Mithril silver is used to highlight the edges of the blades and I'm also using a smaller brush for this. My goal is to have the blade look as, although it's been badly taken care of and rusted up and very dirty, uh, it still has a, um, it still has been recently used and uh, has a, that new metallic sheen to the edges. That's why I use Mithra Silver, because it's such a bright metallic color. Putting it on the edges will really make, make uh, the blade pop, uh, which works very well at this scale. The same color was also used to highlight the edges of the armor as well as the brass parts of the weapons.
The piece of masonry the model is standing on is base coated using graveyard earth. This is applied in uh, two coats with about 30% water to the mixture. Two coats isn't enough to get a complete uh, uniform coverage, but I just wanted to have some darker darker color beneath uh, as a shadow before I begin applying my highlights. The first highlight is made with graveyard earth and denim stone, a 50-50 mix. This is applied roughly all over the area um, in two coats uh, to get a uniform coat. Because I have mixed in a foundation paint, I don't need more than two coats because uh, the foundation will help, will help to cover much more easily than with just a regular color. A wash of Bata Black was then applied. This is very diluted with about 40 to 50 percent water. Basically I just wanted to to shade the area, not, not put a filter over it so to speak. So. This is just done to have some indication of where my highlights will go. And of course to help uh, shade areas. Deneb stone will use to layer in the highlights on the base. I have added about 20% water to the mixture at this point. I'm trying to leave out painting over any of the sh shadowed areas that the previous, uh, previous colors has, have, have created and just painting the, the flat spots and the high spots. This was quite fiddly so I had to go back with a thin down but a black wash to define some of the uh, some of the details as well as uh, some of the shadows that I and that I messed up in this step. Next up I'm gonna use a pigment wash. I'm gonna use Vallejo's natural umber. Um, I'm gonna create kind of a slushy with it and just adding just adding water to the pigment. And this is applied all over the base as well as some of the, the all, of the, all of the lower parts of the model. And since to my knowledge Skaven doesn't really clean their clothes so he'll be having a lot of dried up mud on him and I'm, I'm trying to replicate that by using this pigment wash. For the cloth I'm using in an older brush uh, I'm more, and I'm more stippling it on to make it look more natural like uh, actual mud splatter uh, rather than something that's been painted, painted on. Now once the pigment is completely dry I'm using a stiff bristled brush to wipe off the excess. Since I only added water to the pigment it will easily come off. Uh, in this way you'll create, uh, you'll create highlights, almost like dry brushing, but you're creating the highlights by removing, um, by removing pigment. This is done on the base and on the, uh, the cloth as well. And there you have it, it's all done. I did a couple of things off camera. <clears throat> uh, the um, Obviously I've added the static grass and a little bush there on the side. And also I painted the, uh, the base uh, black. Uh, the gem on the side of the base, uh, of the masonry there, I added, uh, I painted that uh, black. And then I highlighted it up with red gore all the way up to blazing uh, or burning orange blazing orange and orange basically uh, and uh, to get to create that um, gem effect the eyes are painted black and then added blood red to those mm, the piece of hair han hanging there from his right weapon I painted that with a um, desert sand and highlighted up with using uh, using bleach bone mix it into the desert sand and highlighting up until using just pure 
bleach bone. And there's some metal areas around the banner and the chain by, by, back by the neck there, which I painted with Vallejo Model Air gun and just gave it a wash of Devla mud. And lastly, I also painted the amulet around his neck there. I painted it in the exact same way as the the uh, the fire on top of the banner. Luftwaffe camo green mixed with uh, scorpion green, highlighted up until pure scorpion green. Yeah, so all in all, this was a was a great little project. I enjoyed it painting it. I got to use my pigments, which I don't get to use a lot, and uh, that was fun. But I hope you enjoyed watching this video and there'll be more, so stay tuned. Bye bye.